Hello, and welcome to our Unit 5 Integers and Rational Numbers Study Guide. First question, five friends are at the movie theater to watch Catching Fire. One of their moms, who was not watching the movie, paid for the tickets. If the total was $37.25, how much do each of the five friends have to pay back? So in order to solve this question, we need to divide our total amount of money divided by five friends. This is a review question, so I just wanted to make sure we're still good to go on dividing decimals. So five goes into 37, seven times. Let's bring our decimal up in the quotient so we don't forget that. Five goes into 22, four times. So it looks like each of the boys will have to pay back 745 each. Number two, 2.3 or 2 and 3 tenths plus 1 and 4 tenths times 2 tenths. So to solve this problem, for order of operations, we have to do our parentheses first. So I'm going to go down here so I can keep my work out of the way of the problem. And I'm lining my digits up on my multiplication. And I've got two decimal places, so I'll go two places back. So this equals 28 hundredths. Bring down the rest of my problem, and now I can add this part. Sorry. I need to line up my decimal. Oh, sorry, it's right. <laughs> I need to line up my decimal place this time. And because I'm, I'm going to add a zero here so I can add my ones place, my, tenth, my hundredths place, I'm sorry. Need. So our answer is 2 and 58 hundredths as our final answer. All right, moving on. Number three, let me slide this over. Okay. Number three, at 8 a.m. the temperature is 46 degrees Fahrenheit, but the temperature increases 3 degrees per hour for the next few hours. What is the temperature um, at 1 p.m.? So right now it is 8 a.m. and it's 46, 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's increasing three degrees for the next few hours. So I'm going to, so it's increasing three per hour. And I know that from 8 a.m. until 1 o'clock p.m. is five hours. So I'm going to do five hours times three, and that's going to be 15 degrees total. So that'll be 15 degrees Fahrenheit increased. So I'm going to take the 46 that it started off as and add on the 15 degrees. And that'll be 61 degrees Fahrenheit as our temperature at 1 o'clock p.m. Okay, number four. Sorry, I didn't check these before I started recording. Looks like I made a... There we go. Okay, Miss Boop went to the grocery store to buy groceries. She had to buy a pack of Oreos because she loves Oreos for $3.79, a large container of cheese balls, because it's a favorite also, <laughs> for $2.36, and a pint of Froyo for $1.99. She gave the cashier a $20 bill that she stole from Miss Bess. How much change did she get back from the cashier? So again, this is still a review question, going back to adding decimals. So I'm going to write down my three values that she had to buy. So 18, 19, Sorry, I made a mistake there. And 
And when I'm adding decimals, I'm bringing my value, my decimal straight down. So, so far she has spent $8.14. So now I have to take away this from the $20 that she gave the cashier. So again, when I'm adding, subtracting decimals, I have to line up my place value and bring my decimal straight down. So in order to subtract, I've got to borrow a dollar. So this is going to leave this with $19, and this is going to be enough to borrow. So 10 and 4 is 6, 9 and 1 is uh, 8. So she's going to have $11.86 back. Number 5. Place a rational number in the blank so that the three numbers are arranged in order from smallest to largest. So as we talked about in class, we recognize that, you know, when you were in kindergarten, first grade, the numbers three and four, there's nothing in between. Well, now you know that there are lots of numbers between three and four. So for this problem, you're going to have to figure out, oh, sorry bring that back. We're going to have to figure out what number could be between these two decimal problems. And as it appears right now, you're like, there's nothing there. But if we go and add another place value, so we have three, um, three and 690 thousandths. And if we go over here and add a place value as well, now we have uh, three and 680 thousandths. I can see that on a number line, I have any of the following choices that would fit in between these. So any of these answers would work all the way up to 689. And if we were interested in going even further to find another choice, we could also add another zero there. And that introduces us with so many more choices that we could do. So now we could do and then add on another digit and that would fall in between our values so again whenever you're trying to figure out a number in between I recommend making it a decimal and then getting your place values all the same so for this problem any of those that we have listed below would work so any of these would solve this problem that would fit in between the blank Okay, now the next one says order the rational numbers in descending order. So descending means to go from high to low. And again, as a reminder, ascending means to go from low to high. So we want to go from way up here all the way down. Okay, so for these, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn these all into frac uh, to decimals. So I've got 96 hundredths of the decimal, and I've got 4 tenths as a decimal. I'm going to go to this one first, 2 sevenths, and go ahead and work on making that a decimal. And again, when we're doing that, it's the numerator divided by denominator. And I'm going to go ahead and add three decimal places. So two, uh, 7 goes into 20 two times and that's an eight and I know that it keeps on going but I'm gonna stop here so this one Two sevenths is the same value as 2.85. I know that two thirds equals six six repeating. So now I'm going to cut on here and put my decimals on top of each other so that I can clearly see them. And 
and I'm going to go ahead and make them all three decimal places just to make it a little bit clearer. All right, so I'm looking for my highest one right now. My highest one is this one here because of the nine. So that's my highest. My next highest one would be my six. My third highest would be my four. And my smallest value would be my two. Whoops, that's going to be a, my four. So that's the order. So biggest and then works its way down. All right, write an integer for each situation. So basically I need you to recognize that gain is to increase. So this answer is going to be plus 14 because gain means to go up. All right, let me make that better. <laughs> okay, I'm still not happy, sorry. <laughs> ah. Okay. Alright, so our next one is 11 more ball players. So again, that's going to be an increase. So that's going to be a plus 11. Opposite of 123. So if it's a positive 123 right now, we need to make it an opposite, which is a negative. So it's on the other side of the number line from zero. 12 feet above sea level. So again, above is increase. So that's going to be a positive 12. So looking for negative ones, a gain, the opposite of gain would be a loss. Uh, opposite of more would be you know less. Um, above is below. So any of those are your keywords for positive and negative numbers. All right, use uh, greater than, less than, or equal to to answer the following questions. So we're trying to compare these four problems. Right now I've got negative 18 and negative 20. On a number line, negative 18 is closer to zero. So that would indicate that negative 18 is, a, is greater because it's less steps to zero. This one, uh, negative absolute value, uh, sorry, absolute value of negative 1 is going to be 91. And this is going to be a negative absolute value of 93. So it's going to be negative 3, and then that sign comes over with it. So this indicates that uh, 91 is a larger value than negative 93. Next we have... Um, 4.304 and negative 4.034. So this one's a negative, so that means that 4.34 is a larger value. And last but not least, negative 4.6 compared to absolute value, negative absolute value of 4.6. So 4.6 is the absolute value, but then the sign comes down with it to be negative. So that means that this is negative 4.6 and this is negative 4.6. So 4 and 6 tenths um, on both sides are going to be equal values. On this side, which number is farther away from zero? Circle the one in each pair. So here we have 34 spaces from zero. An absolute value of 39 equals 39. Uh, 39 is further away from zero than 34 is. So this one is the winner. This time we have uh, 19 and a negative 39. And this is still means that it is um, 39 spaces from zero. So this one is further in absolute value terms because this one's only, only 19 away. All right, next is which number has the greatest absolute value? Circle one in each group. So this is another way of basically of saying the problems we did up here, um, but you're having three choices. So this time we have 97, ne negative 85, and negative 97. And it looks like I have made a mistake because these two are of equal value so 
both. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, and this one, we have negative 41, 52, and negative 57. So this one is 41 spaces away, this one is 52 spaces, and this one is 57 spaces. So negative 57, it has the larger absolute value than the other two. All right, so uh, now we're doing our fraction decimal percent chart. Um, I'm going to start over here, so with 5 sevenths, turning it into a decimal. So again, that is going to be 5 divided by 7, and we're going to add on three decimal places to make our decimal, put our decimal in the quotient. 7 goes into 5 no times, 7 goes into 50 7 times with one left over. So that's going to be 1 and then bring down. So 7 goes into 10 once. Seven goes into 34 times. So our decimal is going to be 714 thousandths. To go from decimal to percent, we move our decimal two places to the right. So that's going to be 71.4 percent. Next one, going from decimal to percent, I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to go to the right, one, two, and that's going to be 1606 percent. Now to go to our decimal, all we have to do is go back to, our, I mean, to go to a fraction, we have to take our decimal and read it out loud as a whole, as a number. So this is 16 and 6 hundredths. So 16 is my whole and 6 hundredths is my fraction. But this simplifies to be 16 and 3 fiftieths because I am dividing by 2. That's the greatest common factor they have. So this will be my final answer. Alright, my last one, uh, percent to decimal and fraction. I'm going to go from percent, so this will be my first one, then I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go to my fraction after I've done my decimal. So for this one, I'm going to first convert um, my percent into a decimal. So I do that by moving my decimal place two places to the left. Oops. Okay, and that's going to be So 0, um, 0 0.0472. And then my fraction is going to be this number over 10,000. So it'll be 472 over 10,000, because we're in the 10,000s place values, is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. And then I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to divide by 2 just to be simple right now. And that's not going to be enough. So I'm going to go down here. So I've got 286. Divide by 2 again. Okay. All right, so I, um, I checked my math and I made a mistake up here, so I need to go back and erase that. I apologize. Whoops. Apologize for that. All right, so let's try that again. So this should have been 236. And this time I'm going to divide by 4 to get 59. And I'm going to divide by 4 down here as well.
and then that will be your final answer. So, so that's your the, dec the fraction for the decimal and the percent. So the next part, um, your last question, is use the number line below and place the following rational numbers accordingly. So I am going to use a couple of different strategies. I think mainly I'm going to go ahead and get my line drawn here. When in doubt, you can convert them to the same unit. You can convert them all to decimals. So this one I know um, is 2 6, which is basically 1 third. I'm going to go ahead and get my number line kind of set up. It's a little bit bigger. Okay, so now I know that 5.1 is going to go over here on the right. Let's go green. Whoops. Okay, so 5.1 will go roughly right here because it's a positive number. This is negative 5.4, so that's going to be slightly past the negative sign um, right before the halfway point. Next one is 58 hundredths. So this is between 0 and 1. It's more than halfway, but not quite further than that. So I'm going to go right here and put 58 hundredths, um, representing about a little bit more than halfway. My next one is uh, 2 6, which is 1 third. So I know that 1 third is uh, going to fall about right here. So again, 2 6 is equal to 1 third. And then my last one is negative 5 eighths. So I know that this is not is, is less than 0, but more than negative 1. And it's a little bit more than halfway because halfway will be 4 eighths. So it's going to be placed about right here for negative. 5 eighths. So this one I didn't need to convert them, but if they were similar fractions that were close to each other, I would encourage you to go ahead and convert them either to all the same fraction or, or decimal. So that's it for Unit 5 Integers and Rational Numbers. Good luck on the test.